Hi, I'm Johnny Jenkins and welcome to this Raw News special interview with Megan Clark, the Education Officer at Warwick University Students' Union. Megan is here to answer questions from you, students, about the SU's demands ahead of the coming term and the coming year. So let's welcome Megan Clark. Megan, hi, thanks so much for talking to us. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank yeah. you. Um, and and it's it's great to have this opportunity to put some questions uh, from students to you. But let's begin with with an opportunity for you to outline your demands for the university for the year ahead. Yeah. So basically, yesterday, as many of you saw, the SU launched our Protect Our People campaign, which basically is a campaign encompassing three demands um, that the university reinstate the sessional tutor budget, which funds a lot of casualised tutors who teach our seminars alongside their PhD courses. Um, and cutting that, obviously, is entirely detrimental to teaching quality on our degrees um, so we're demanding that that is reinstated we're also demanding that for term one teaching moves online as the norm um, we do not believe that it is safe um, for students and staff to be returning to campus obviously in some cases students do need to be on campus and we're aware that with labs and other um, practical based courses that teaching will be in person, but just for the most part, we want it to be online. And then the final demand is that the university waive the rent of the rent strikers. Um, students in off-campus Warwick accommodation have been rent striking since around March, April time. There's still 50 people rent striking and throughout these months, they've been threatened with various um, consequences. They are not rent striking because they want to, they are rent striking because they need to, because they can't afford their rent and they haven't been able to access their accommodation due to national or international laws. Um, so we are supporting them in um, getting the university to waive their rents and allow them to not pay, essentially. Yeah. And those demands <laughs> were put out on, on Monday afternoon. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that there have been quite a few comments and, and questions on, on social media. The one I have seen the most, and as I say, I've asked students for their questions, um, like this one from Charlotte Earl, second year PACE student. Why have the SU adopted this view without any genuine consultation of students? Similar question from Sophie Kitching. Why weren't students consulted on such an important decision supposedly made on their behalf? Many students, Megan, think you're making this decision for them. Yeah, so I totally understand the campaign has three demands with the rent strike and with um, the STP cuts. The SU is already mandated to support those um, um, stances. It's already gone through ASV or student council. With the online teaching issue, coronavirus is such a rapidly changing situation and we believed we needed to take decisive action with term being so close. Um, Unfortunately, SU bylaws mean we cannot run ASVs outside of term time. And we felt we needed to take this stance before students and staff went back into unsafe classrooms. So I totally understand the concerns around students not getting a vote on this, but it's just due to like the rapidly changing situation. As I said, coronavirus cases are going up again in the UK. And we felt we needed to get this campaign out and start the behind the scenes work with the university of making sure um, university is as safe as possible essentially. And for context ASV is an all student vote which yes. they take place during term time so that's understandable when it comes to the rent strike and the STP but on online learning in particular what was the process in making this decision? Did it go to a student council? Was it just the full-time officers agreeing this? Were the part-time officers involved in this decision talk me through the logistics yeah. of how this decision was made 
Yeah, so this decision was made as um, a full and part time officer team. Unfortunately, similarly with student council, student council also can't meet outside of term time due to the structure of the student union. So it was a full and part time officer decision. Um, there were like multiple meetings we had as teams discussing and debating the issue it totally was not an easy decision to make and concerns were raised on various various issues around calling for online teaching especially without the ability to do a student vote um, we were elected to represent students and we feel like um, students will be safest um, remote learning. Um, we want to protect all students and another reason that like we could not do a survey is we want to protect all students, especially the most vulnerable students, those that might have chronic illnesses or be on clinically vulnerable NHS lists and their views are not well represented in surveys where those students are obviously the minority. So that is another concern we had while um, discussing this as an officer team. I think many students would understand uh, the concerns around vulnerable uh, people and those that perhaps have been shielding earlier this year and then not being able to return to university. But these are questions I put to Luke Meffin, the SU president, some months ago now, and, and he agreed that shielded students, of course, would need an option to be able to do it online. But to, to request that all classes except labs and, and physical um, classes that need to take place, to move them online seems to be quite a measure to announce. So let put some more questions here. Anna, second year EPACE student, why has the SU not consulted students on the matter? Well, we covered that. But then Anna goes on to say, you represent us and it seems like we are mostly against your campaign. Isn't that weird? Uh, and I understand that Facebook isn't all of the student body. Matteo, an MSc e economics student, is there any way for students to contest this decision or bring up complaints to the SU directly about this? Matteo says it's presumptive to take such a hard stance on behalf of all students? Obviously, we're aware that um, with shielding students, many of them will have the choice. But what we're concerned about is that for students who um, are not vulnerable, but are concerned, really concerned about COVID, possibly due to deaths in their families, deaths in their friend groups over the last few months, um, we don't want those students to be um, forced into a classroom that they feel unsafe in. And we don't want those students to be punished for missing monitoring points and punished for not attending those seminars which is like vital um what were the other questions sorry i can't <laughs> there's a question about the the complaints process and how someone perhaps could uh, appeal this decision if they don't think um it, it's something that they can get behind i mean the su complaints process um i think is available um on our website uh, you can get in contact with us directly as well myself my email is education at yksu.com if people want to message me directly email me directly with their concerns and hopefully i'll be able to either answer or abate some of them uh, in terms of what we're working on in the background in university committees as well OK, we'll move on from this topic in a moment, but yeah. you've mentioned the rise in coronavirus cases, particularly in the UK in the past week and a half. Um, and lots of that has been attributed to 17 to 24 year olds. Of course, university students fall into that bracket. So you say to me today, Megan, that actually rising cases here in the UK is part of the reason that you made this decision. Yeah, of course. I feel that over the past week, the um, talk from government has been really one of blame and stereotyping of young people. And for the most part, young people have um, been following the guidelines, the very confusing guidelines in some um, places to try and keep themselves and their families safe and I definitely don't think it's fair that we have been blamed for this rise in coronavirus cases when it's the government that is advising us to go back to work, go back to school, go back to college and go back to university. Um, not only have um, UK cases rose over the past week or so, American universities actually went back uh, to college campuses in like mid-August time 
and already there's been casing or cases on 1200 campuses 88,000 cases of coronavirus in total and that's probably an undercount because some American universities aren't counting the numbers and we're very aware that a similar thing could happen in the UK for example at Alabama within two weeks of term starting over a thousand students have tested positive which is one in 30 of their student population and we also have scientific backing on this both independent sage and government sage and the British Medical Journal are calling universities incredibly high risk environments and if teaching can be moved online to prevent this risk we believe it should um, like the university is putting in place measures around social distancing and wearing masks and stuff like that but nothing will make tiny seminar rooms as safe as not being in them in the first place and if you're sat in a seminar room wearing a mask you don't get the same experience as you would in a normal time seminar anyway like you're not able to read the facial expressions of the people you're discussing the topics with um, and not able to read the facial expressions of the tutor. Uh, it might be a case of all students facing forward, so you're not even able to face each other and discuss. So we think obviously it's going to be very difficult and very different to do those seminars on Teams, but at least you're able to have that discussion like we are now and see each other's faces and expressions and everything like that, essentially. But I know that if I was in a room with you now, be you wearing a face mask or not, and I could look into your eyes and, and, and we could connect as human beings in a room together did I think this we would have a better interview if we were there do you think that that actually having a digital uh seminars and classes um of course there's questions about access to internet and access to resources but let's just assume just for this question's sake that people have that um digital seminars and classes are you going to be able, with a delay and with maybe some technical difficulties, going to have the same educational standard? Honestly, we do believe that in-person teaching is better, but given the current coronavirus pandemic, it's just not safe. We're asking for this to be a temporary measure throughout term one. There's already been a case on campus, which I think the board has reported on, and that's three, four weeks prior to campus even opening to the majority of the student population. So the fact that there's already been a COVID case on campus shows how likely it is that there will be an outbreak. Um, obviously in person is better and we wish that this was possible but given like how cases are going up handling of um, coronavirus across the UK we just don't think it's safe and other universities have made the move to go online uh, in term one UCL and St Andrews just to name a couple so it is something that the sector are starting to think about and we definitely think that Warwick needs to think about it. The government uh, who is advised by SAGE the advisory group disagree that it's unsafe they say and this links into Cam Hall's question, he's a second year patient student. Given that government guidance is that students can return to COVID secure, in other words, safe, face-to-face -face teaching, why is the SU opposing this? And Cam asks, does it not have the confidence that the, the university can deliver this? If not, why has the SU decided not to work constructively with the university to provide a COVID secure, a safe alternative? Uh, so, sorry, I was thinking in my head. Um, so government guidance has been confusing and debatable, to be honest, throughout this pandemic. Um, the UK has one of the worst death rates um, per 100,000 in the world. So I don't think we should necessarily be following the government advice as gospel when we've had what even is the death toll now 50 or 60,000 deaths in the UK which I would say the government are responsible for in terms of constructively working with the university behind the scenes our relationship with the university is constructive we are having these conversations and raising our concerns with them in our various committee meetings that us as SAB sit on um, but we felt that going public with this campaign was the only way to put the pressure on that was necessary to like 
keep the local community, students and staff safe. Um, yeah. And before we get on, I want to talk a little bit about mental health and, and the effect there. Um, but it's clear you think an online approach is best. Um, just for clarity on those figures, I think they sit around 42, 43,000 people have lost their lives, which is, of course, an awful number and is absolutely devastating. Um, in terms of making this decision now, you made it on Monday of this week. Um, many students, some many students have booked flights, have booked transport already, spent a lot of money, um, perhaps paid their rent on private accommodation as as well as maybe even Warwick accommodation if they, they decide to pay that early. Um, it, it seems fairly late, late in the day, under two weeks before Freshers' Week, a digital Freshers' Week begins to introduce this policy. Some students already on campus, already in, the, already in Leamington or Coventry, there will be people watching that say, I agree that it's safe we move this online, but why on earth have you left it so late? Well, we believe that the uni should have been prepared to um, move online as the norm since the beginning of the summer. Um, at the start of like our terms as sabbatical officers, coronavirus cases were very low. Um, it like it was a discussion we've been having actually for quite a few weeks prior to the launch of our campaign, also for preparation of the campaign. Um, it's just like the like debate between officers um like we had to go through all of these concerns that students are bringing up ourselves and weigh them against um like an outbreak on campus essentially and what was best for students obviously the uni should have been prepared and should have considered going online much earlier and like the students union did in term three we will be working with local mps for example on if people if if the term does go online and people choose not to travel, um, working on like contract releases um, from private accommodation um, and stuff around that, we will be working on. Um, we are aware that it's an issue. I myself had to pay rent in term three for a house I could not access. And we are very close to the student population and the student concerns in that regard. Um, so yeah, we will be like housing is something that was brought up and we will be um, working with um, local communities on like landlords and housing releases for those that want them, um, especially if time does move online. But the, uh, the fact is that this is the SU calling on the university to do this. Our campaign doesn't necessarily mean that teaching will move online. We hope it will for the well-being of our student community. Um, but we're aware that this isn't necessarily the case and we just have to see what happens and if it does move online we will be going down the route of um, campaigning for housing contract releases and stuff around that like we did in term three last year. Some international students are already on campus in a two-week isolation period after um, landing from countries that aren't on the government's safe list and they're doing that isolation so that when term begins they can go out and be safe and live their life. Lawrence Jacquard who's a parent says my son is already on campus waiting for the course to start. If nothing starts in person what is the point of coming from a foreign country to the UK? How can my son integrate? How can he have the student experience he deserves? Lawrence Jacquard, a reminder as a parent, says this would be less quality, depressing, and if I'd have known, my son would have started studying somewhere else. So to international students or, or perhaps students based in the UK that were already at university, have no way of getting home, you're saying, well, it may be online, but you're going to have to spend your time in Coventry and Leamington on campus. Obviously, we're concerned about particularly incoming first years and incoming fresher international students. There will still be some semblance of university student experience, as in like you'll still have um, your flat to mix with and you'll still be able to socialise in up to groups of six uh, among like society groups and society events that are moving online for Freshers Week. So that will still be available and we're trying to make sure 
ensure that that student experience is as good as possible. But in order to make the campus as safe for people who need to be there for labs and practical courses or even for society events of up to six people uh, in order to make campus safe for them we believe that we have to limit interactions on campus and limiting seminars and other in-person um, tutorials and stuff like that makes it possible for those other events to go ahead and we understand that university is going to be looking very different um, this year and we completely sympathize with the student population and we are um, working our hardest to make sure that it is as good as possible but also I think people need to understand that this is like and extenuating circumstances we like we're in the middle of a global pandemic and we as officers are doing the best we can to keep students safe and also make sure that they have some semblance of normality whatever that means now and it's such a difficult balance to make between safety and seminars essentially Mental health is in crisis at Warwick and is in crisis yeah. of people all over the world of our age. And some of some students that have contacted me are concerned that an online term one or an online year could work against this. Sebastian Maxted, second year PACE student, if university does move online and your demands are accepted, classes will be online, levels of depression, loneliness and anxiety will rocket among the student popula population, particularly for freshers, some of whom are already locked away in their flats. This will have very real consequences for the students you claim to safeguard. What do you say to Sebastian? Obviously, we are concerned about the mental health of our students, like wellbeing support services uh, are always in demand, whether there's a pandemic or not. We are working closely with them to make sure that there are as many appointments available every day as possible. Uh, it will be a case for the most part of um, those appointments um, being online over video call or over phone call for the most part. Um, so wellbeing will be provided in that in term personal tutoring will be uh, more regular especially for incoming freshers there's for most departments are doing an increased number of meetings between their personal tutors and incoming first years to check up on them and check up on their mental state and how they are settling into university like settling into university is such a difficult experience for many people um, regardless of whether there's a pandemic on and we totally understand that that's incredibly difficult but we're also aware that if a person does go to a seminar and end up getting coronavirus and gets very physically ill they also won't be able to like travel home and be with family and have that family support network so it's kind of balancing those issues out um, and if someone gets ill like physically ill and then is self-isolating and also then has mental health issues it's just a lot of things on top of each other that we're trying to avoid have you been back in the office in the SU building yet no not yet um, I think some of us have been in for like um, various events that have needed us uh, in person um, with the possibility of us getting back into the office maybe around term time um, but it's stuff around like implementing masks in the offices and same with the university so we're just working out all the guidelines around that as well so we've been working from home for the last six weeks that we've been in office um, yeah. If you're able to follow the guidelines and find a way for you to safely get back in the office, why can't you work to follow the guidelines to get students safely back into their classrooms? I mean, I think that like personally uh, as staff members in the students union we are being given the option of whether to come into the office or not and for the most part we are being encouraged to work from home and I think that's similar with the university though I'm not exactly sure what their staff guidelines are um, so 
unlike the vast majority of students, we are being given the choice. Um, I probably am going to choose not to go onto campus for my safety, also because masks are difficult with glasses, but that's another story. Um, so the fact that we are being given the option and for the most part, students aren't, and we are being encouraged to work from home, whereas students are being encouraged to come in, it's just very different. Um, yeah. Okay, Megan. Um, final question then. We know that social distancing um, and following those guidelines can be a problem in terms of younger people and people of the age of 17 to 24. If we do return to university and we do return to campus and the university don't agree your demands, would you encourage students to snitch on their friends if they see them breaking social distance guidelines? No. <laughs> That is a very difficult question. I suppose it's up to the individual student and the situation that they are in. Um, obviously, it depends, like, like I would say, talking to the individual personally first and finding out the issue and trying to sort it out between themselves, um, between before possibly snitching to either, I don't know, campus security, the police, I don't know who you would um, report that to. Um, so I'd say up to the individual student and up to the individual situation. Um, I totally get that if um, you as a student are self-isolating or shielding and your flatmates are not, that can be an incredibly concerning situation. And that's another issue we thought of because in terms of, okay, shielding students can um, have online teaching, but if their entire flats are going out to seminars and bringing COVID back, it still puts them in danger. And even if students were all given the option and half the flat decided to go to seminars and half the flat decided to stay in, then coronavirus would still be being brought back to those concerned or possibly clinically vulnerable students. Um, I'd also, I know this is the last question, but I'd also just like to bring up because you brought up about the access point and access to technology and Wi-Fi connection. And we totally get that this is an issue. Um, we've actually put out a survey that's linked on our launch statement and on our social media launch on both Twitter and Facebook, uh, asking students to tell us what issues they're having um, well, around technology and around other issues uh, surrounding like mental health and con other concerns around um, teaching online so if people could go and fill that in it would just um, help us get backing when we go into these university committees and ask them to give students financial technological support the university have set up an IT support fund which you can find on their hardship fund site but unfortunately it's only currently available for home students so we are working on getting that available to all students um, as soon as possible because it's currently av available to students on the white bursary who are obviously most likely to be struggling with these extra costs and the cost of a adequate laptop um, so we are working on all of that behind the scenes and if people could fill in our survey that will give us extra backing when going to the university with these concerns because we understand there are concerns with moving online and we've gone through many of them in this interview um, and we are trying to mitigate against them as best as we can and if there are concerns or questions that perhaps we haven't covered today, uh, perhaps you could give us your email address and, and people could get in touch with you that way. Yeah, I think I mentioned it earlier, but it's just education at warwicksu.com. And if I can't answer the question myself, I will forward it on to either a university colleague or another sabbatical officer that might be aware of that particular guideline. OK, Megan Clark, thanks ever so much for Thank your you. time today. Thank you. That's Megan Clark, uh, the Education Officer at Warwick University Students' Union. Thanks ever so much for watching this Raw News special with me, Johnny Jenkins. Be sure to follow Raw News on social media for more news and debate. Across campus, online and on 12.51am, this, this, this is your student radio station.